Are you not perhaps afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. Are you not, perhaps, afraid of what might happen to you as a result of making these revelations? Oh, yes. I probably am a dead man already. What but, do you uh, mean? Well, uh, when, you know, when you understand the makeup of the Muslim movement and the psychology of the Muslim movement, as long as uh, any, if I, I myself, in, by having confidence in the leader of the Muslim movement, if someone came to me, and I had no knowledge whatsoever of what had taken place, and they told me what I'm saying, I would kill them myself. The only thing that would prevent me from killing someone who made a statement like this, they would have to be able to let me know that it's true. Now, if anyone had come to me other than Mr. Muhammad's son, I never would have believed it even enough to look into it. But I had been around him so closely, I had seen indications of, its, of, its, uh, of the reality of it, but my religious sincerity made me block it out of my mind. Have you received threats on your life? Oh, yes. Uh, I first received threats on my life in December. Uh, rather, no, yes, in December. No, not in December, in January. When I, uh, when it first became known that I had uh, came back to come back to New York and told the captain of the fruit in New York, who was my right-hand man, formerly, and also the secretary of the New York mosque and the minister in Boston, when it became known that I had told them, uh, then uh, an effort was made to shut me up. One brother uh, encouraged to go out to my house and shut me up. And uh, it, fortunately, it was a brother who was well capable of doing so, but it was a brother who was highly uh, intelligent. He was academically equipped to think for himself. And what he was told to do didn't add up. And fortunately, he was the one who put out a feeler to me to find out what was wrong. And I opened his eyes. And then he opened the eyes of the same crew whose job it is to do this kind of work. You mean he was going to kill you? Oh, yes. Uh, one of them was... Uh, an attempt was made to get one of them to wire my car with an explosive. That one is with me right now. Elijah Muhammad says of the Muslims, we carry no arms and we do not seek to win victory with arms. We do nothing to others that we would not have done unto us. The uh, two brothers were sent after me with revolvers by Joseph, the captain of the fruit in New York. They were armed. Well, it was a certain uh, noise, and then um, the two fellas, one was a black Muslim, and I don't know who the other one was because I didn't see him, ran and started shooting, and everybody black fell to the floor. Yes, sir. They were black Muslims. Yes, sir. They were black Muslims. Was that recognized? The action was basically uh, what uh, took place. Uh, me and uh, Leon, we took seats down in the front of the order barn. We came early. Um, we would drift into the uh, order barn. Um, if indeed there was a search, then we could never enter. There was no search, so uh, we drifted in just like uh, we had hoped to. Uh, Leon Davis and myself took seats uh, down front on the uh, left-hand side. Uh, Benjamin and uh, William, William, who carried the uh, sort of shotgun, sat right behind us, you know. And uh, Wilbur sat somewhat uh, in the back or almost in the middle. And our plan was, as soon as uh, the uh, brother came out to speak, that uh, Wilbur would throw the uh, smoke bomb to make a dis distraction. And that uh, William would uh, fire his uh, shotgun and that uh, Leon and myself, we would uh, fire our weapons. And then this uh, break for the door.
front row, uh, basically on the uh, left-hand side, close to the uh, front of the stage. You mean down around in that area? Yeah, wherever, the, wherever the rows uh, started, around mm -hmm. down here somewhere. Towards the center aisle? Towards the center aisle. Mm -hmm. right. Now, when you got there, you all came in the same car? Yes. And three people were armed. You, Another man who had a, a, a pistol, another man who had a shotgun. The fourth person had a smoke bomb. Yes. And the fifth person was unarmed. Yes. Yes. Now, there are <clears throat> exits on either side of the stage. This is the only one in the picture. Was there any plan for anybody to leave by that exit? As I recall, the, the exit was not uh, considered at the time. I don't know. Uh, whether that was because uh, it was locked or chained or what. But the exit was not considered as uh, a means of leaving. So uh, we thought to leave by going back toward the entrance. Coming back out towards Coming the... back out toward the entrance that we had came in and moving with the uh, crowd. So tell me exactly what happened that day when it happened. Uh, we arrived early, uh, we drifted in uh, two at a time, or one uh, at a time, uh, but going in, you know, uh, not together. Uh, we got there early. Um, I remember uh, Leon and myself coming in early, walking down to the front and taking a seat in front on the left-hand side, close to the middle aisle. Um, what about this scuffle in the <clears throat> back where somebody had some, his hand in somebody's pocket or something? Well, that was a uh, part of, uh, to distract, uh, the, um, people in regards to, at the same time when the, the brother came out to, uh, start speaking, the brother would cause a distraction, and, uh, during the distraction, uh, brother who fired the shotgun would fire the shotgun. And uh, that's basically uh, what we did. So your eyes were not on the scuffle that was taken back, the diversionary scuffle, but you were watching Malcolm. Yes. So Malcolm walked out, and he said his greeting. Right. And the next thing you know, you heard <clears throat> the scuffle, and then the man stood up behind you with a shotgun, man, fired man. the shot. Yes. And then you? Myself. Uh, and the other brother, we just fired, I walked toward the stage a few steps, fired our guns in that direction, broke toward the, uh, the back. Do you remember where you hit Malcolm? No, I don't. How many shots? Did you empty your piece? Uh, no, I don't think I did empty my gun. I fired off a few shots. Fired off a few. Yeah, I love Elijah Muhammad enough that if you attack him, I would kill you. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I'm not a killer. But neither are you. But if somebody attack what you love, each one of you in here would become a killer instantaneously. Am I lying? Mother, let somebody look like they're attacking your child. Here's a woman who fought a bear because the bear snatched her baby and she ran the bear down screaming until the bear dropped her baby love casts out fear we don't give a damn about no white man law when you attack what we love And frankly, it ain't none of your business. What did you got to say about it? Did you teach Malcolm? Did you make Malcolm? Did you clean up Malcolm? Did you put Malcolm out before the world? Was Malcolm your traitor or was he ours? 
And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? You just shut your mouth and stay out of it. Because in the future, we're going to become a nation. And the nation got to be able to deal with traitors and cutthroats and turncoats. The white man does deals with his. The Jews deal with theirs. Salman Rushdie wrote a nasty thing about the prophet and Imam Khomeini put out a death thing on him and it stands today.